Hey guys, it's Jaden Clark here from Jazz Lesson Videos, and today I'm going to be talking about how to learn any chord progression by ear. Now, of course, when we use the term by ear or learning progressions by ear or hearing our way through chord progressions, well, it's a little bit of an illusion. If anything, the way that we can do this is by learning chord progressions themselves and already being familiar with how chords move. Right? For example, if I'm on a five chord, I know because five chords generally resolve to the one that a one chord is probably going to be next. So I can hear my way to that one chord. How do we do it? Well, it requires a bit of practice. So of course, like a two, five, one, we want to go ahead and memorize many different chord progressions that appear in different jazz standards. This helps us not only learn other chord progressions, but it helps us learn tunes much more quickly because we're able to kind of predict which chord comes next because we've seen it so many times before. So to help us get started, we're gonna check out five different chord progressions that you can familiarize yourself with, as well as the different strategies and vocabulary that can help us memorize these different chord progressions. All of these come from our resource here at Jazz Lesson Videos, Essential Changes, Vocabulary for Common Chord Progressions, written by Andrew Gould. As always, you can find the link to this resource in the description, and you can go ahead and use the code EAR5 for an additional $5 off the purchase of that resource. So let's go ahead and jump straight into this thing here. Now, just before we do that, of course, it's important to mention that Andrew provides a bunch of different vocabulary over all the different phrases that we're going over here today. You'll find phrases like chord tone phrases, chord scale phrases, chromatic phrases, and much more that can really help you get up to speed with any progression that you're having trouble with. So of course, this first chord progression we're gonna look at is the two, five, one, to the six. And this particular phrase that we're gonna look at can actually be found on page one of the Essential Changes resource. So let's go ahead and take a quick listen to it now. Okay, so let's break down this phrase here. So of course we can see we're actually starting on the minor seven of the two chord. We actually go down the arpeggios and of course it's important to note that this is a chord tone phrase so it's going to be utilizing only chord tones, that is one, three, five, and seven. So we go down that arpeggio, we land on the root note on beat three. Of course, that's a strong beat, so it's a good one to land on the root. And then we move straight back up the arpeggio and we're able to resolve nicely to the third of the five chord. So from there, we once again, utilize a slightly different permutation of the arpeggio. We end up on the seven and of course on beat three and we move down to the fifth. We, of course, we move down that arpeggio once again. Then we jump back up to the root note on beat one of measure three. So we're now to the one chord we have resolved. Okay, but that's not the end of the phrase just yet. So we're at the root, we move down to the fifth, and of course, we're just moving up the arpeggio. So we start from the fifth, we jump up to the seventh, and we just move up the arpeggio from there. And of course that leads nicely into the third of the six chords. So of course that six chord would then eventually wrap around nicely to that two chord because you can kind of think of it as a five of two. Of course, we're looking at it in the key of the one, in our case, C. So we're looking at it as the six chord, but of course it wraps around nicely. It's why you see this kind of progression in all jazz standards. All jazz standards, you're gonna be seeing this a whole bunch, so it is quite important that we learn this one. Okay, so the next chord progression we're gonna look at now is very similar to the first in that we actually use the same chords. Instead, we're moving that six that we found at the end of the last progression to the beginning. So we're turning that from a dominant seven chord to a minor seven chord, right? Okay, so we, we're starting this progression now with the six minor. So of course, we've got six, two, five, one, and I'm sure many of you have already caught on to this, but of course this is the start of all the things you are. So once again, kind of like the last progression, we see this a fair bit in that we've got the two, five, one. It's just, we're putting that six chord at the beginning rather than at the end, allowing us to wrap back around to that two chord. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a listen to a phrase over this progression. Now, this is going to be utilizing chord scales. Okay, so not just one, three, five, and seven. We're utilizing the rest of the notes in the scale now as well.
Okay, so let's jump into this phrase. Of course, I should mention that you can find this particular phrase on page 9 of the Essential Changes resource. And as with all of these phrases, Andrew has nicely laid them out in all 12 keys so you're able to access any particular key that you want very, very quickly. So to start off, of course, we start there on beat 1 and we have this nice little embellishment up to the 9. So you see we actually start on the 9, we then lead to the 3rd, we've got that triplet embellishment, so we actually move up the arpeggio and we land on the 9 once again on B3. And then we move down the Dorian scale. And of course with that F sharp there, we're able to lead nicely into the 3rd of the 2 chords. So the 3rd, we move up to the 5th, and then we're able to add a quick little resolution to the 1 there on B2 and. So from there we're able to lead nicely once again to the ninth. so kind of a common theme there with the 6th chord and the 5th chord we're starting once again on the ninth in that measure. And then we have another triplet embellishment. So this triple embellishment is not really using the arpeggio, it's got a couple of chord tones in there, but it's also got the 11th that is acting sort of as a passing note to the third there on beat three. So once again, we're putting chord tones on that strong beat. It's always a theme that I like to highlight in these kinds of phrases. And then we lead nicely down the scale to the third of the one chord. What's happening over this one chord is we're really just kind of wrapping back around as if we were to wrap back around to the sixth. We start there on the third, we jump up to the fifth, move up the scale for a bit, we jump up to the ninth, and we're back down to the scale and it would wrap nicely back around to the sixth once again. Okay, so on to the third chord progression here. Now we're going to be checking out a progression that I like to think of as the back door two, five, one. Now, of course, the actual spelling for those chords are the 4 minor 7 and the flat 7, 7 to the 1 major 7. However, that's not really how I memorize it. Of course, I like to think of this as a backdoor 2, 5. Now, where the word backdoor came from is that when resolving from 5 to 1, how you would usually resolve to a 1 chord, the root movement generally goes from high to low, right? So if I were to sing it, do, da, da, that's typically how we think of the root movement in a 2-5-1. Of course, it doesn't always happen like that. You could resolve from low to high, but let's for this instance, just think of it as almost always resolving from high to low, right? 5-1. So now with the back door 2-5, this is where it gets its name from, the 5 in the back door to 5, so that flat 7-7. Seven, seven. It doesn't really make sense for us to go from high to low because it's the flat 7-7, seven, seven, right? It is, it is one whole step away from the 1. So it's going to resolve up, right? It's going to resolve, in other words, through the back door. That is where that naming convention actually comes from. And of course, now that we're making it a back door to 5, well, we have that 4 minor 7 as well. So, of course, the root movement, da, da, da. Okay, it's like this kind of like uh, opening like a new world or something like that. It's a, it's a really, really colorful sound and it's, it's cool. So, tunes that you will have heard this particular progression on is, of course, something like Yardbird Suite. You see backdoor 5 chords everywhere all the time. It occurs in There'll Never Be Another You as well. And so it's a great one to wrap your ear around. It can also be used as substitutions as well if you want to play a little bit outside on a regular 2-5-1. So let's have a listen to a phrase over this here now. Okay, so this phrase can be found on page 23 of the Essential Changes resource. And of course, it's a chromatic phrase. So there's a little more going on than just chord scales. We're using chromatic passing tones, enclosures, approach notes, uh, all of those devices. So jumping into this phrase here, of course, we're starting on a chromatic passing tone. You can think of it as sort of the, the sharp one. But really, what we're doing here is we are chromatically enclosing the minor third there on beat three. And then from there, we've kind of got like a one, two, three, five cell. Of course, we're just starting that on the third, but that's how I like to think of it. And then from there, we lead into, once again, another chromatic passing term. And we sort of delay that resolution to the third there on beat one and, right? That's on the 
backdoor five or the flat seven seven. Okay, so from that third on the flat seven seven, we sort of move up a diminished arpeggio. And then what we do is we actually move down chromatically. We actually land on the sharp 11 of the one chord. So we're just kind of delaying that resolution a whole lot. So we move from the sharp 11, we move up to the sixth and then the ninth. And then we finally, right, we chromatically resolve to the one on beat three there. And on that beat three, we move down to that, what is essentially a, a flat six. And this sort of implies like another little five chord and we end up resolving nicely to the third there on beat one of measure four and subsequently to the sixth at the end of that measure. So just before we move on to the fourth chord progression, of course, if you want to go ahead and dive any deeper into any of these progressions, into any further progressions that we don't cover in this video, absolutely go ahead and check out Andrew Gould's Essential Changes resource. Of course, you can find the link in the description below. And of course, use code EO5 for $5 off if you are gonna check that out. So the next progression we're going to look at is much longer and of course we can actually find something like this at the start of tunes like Confirmation and as well as the Bird Blues. So the way we can think of this, I like to think of it as like the Confirmation changes, but it really is 1 to the minor 2-5 to the 6 to the 5-5 five of five, and then a 2-5 to the 4. Right? And then, of course, in this particular phrase that we're going to look at, we then wrap back around to the one. So we've got a 2-5-1 towards the end of that. So let's jump straight into this one and take a listen. <laughs> Okay, so once again, of course, we're taking a look at a chord tone phrase, and this particular phrase can be found in page 58 of Andrew Gould's Essential Changes. So let's actually break this down now. So starting from the one chord, we are starting on the seventh, there on beat one, we move straight up to the arpeggio, and we end up resolving to the root note there on beat three and. Of course, from there, we've got the seventh and we resolve to the seventh of the minor two of the six. So this whole measure I'm thinking of as a two five or a minor two five to the six chord there on beat one of measure three. So in that minor two, we just move straight down the arpeggio from the seventh and we resolve nicely back up to the third there of the five chord. So of course, when we're utilizing chord tones, when it comes to voice leading, chord tone to chord tone, no matter how large the jump is actually gonna sound pretty good. So that's why we're able to go from the root note there of the two chord all the way up to the third there of the five chord. So from that, we're able to resolve down a half step nicely to the seventh there of the sixth chord. And once again, we're just moving straight back down that arpeggio. And similarly, we're resolving up to the third of the five. So we're thinking of this as a five of five, but of course, while the next chord has the same root note as the five, it really is a two of four, right? Because we've got that two five that resolves to the four dominant seven. So this D seven that we're looking at, we're thinking of it as a five of five because it's the easiest way to think of it. It's the easiest way to spell it, but really we're leading into that two five of the four. Okay, so from there, we hit the seventh of the two chord, right? This is the two of the four there on beat one of measure four. And we've got a nice triplet embellishment, just moving down the arpeggio, once again, resolving up to the third there of the five of four. So from there, we're able to land on the flat seven of the dominant seven chord, right? That is the four dominant seven. And we've got a nice, a couple of nice quarter notes there. So, you know, in a, in a bebop phrase, you make those quarter notes nice and fat. We've got from the flat seven to the third to the fifth, and we've got a nice quarter note rest there, leaving a little bit of space. And from there, we're just wrapping back around to the one. So we've got that major two five back to the one, right? We've got some nice work with the arpeggio. So we've got a nice permutation of that two chord there leading to the third of the five chord. And of course, it just wraps nicely back around to what would be the one chord in the next measure, right? Because we see that two five, we know that a two five is generally leading to the one. So there's that theme of having seen a progression enough and that we're then able to sort of predict, we're able to hear what comes next. Okay, so moving on to our fifth and final progression now, we're gonna be looking at a progression that I like to think of as one to the sharp two diminished seven to the minor three to the sharp three diminished seven. So it's a really, really nice way to sort of extend the tonality 
of a one chord, at least in classical music, that's kind of how this was thought of. And of course we see this in tunes like It Could Happen To You. So the tune that I was playing right at the beginning of the video, of course, starts with this exact progression, making it a really, really great one to get into our ears. So this next phrase that we're gonna to listen to, you can find this one on page 80 of the Essential Changes resource. And we're going to be utilizing the chord scale now. So this is a good one to practice chord scales on because we are utilizing diminished chords, therefore we're going to be using the whole half diminished, right? This is opposed to the half whole diminished that you would utilize over five chords. Seeing as we are dealing with diminished seven chords, this is a perfect instance in which we can use the whole half diminished scale. And that's what this phrase uses here. We can listen to this here now. <laughs> Okay, so jumping straight into this phrase now, we go ahead and start on the seven, right? So we're just moving down there by step from the seventh. We've got a little jump down to the third before leading to the ninth there on beat three of that one chord. And we actually have that same cell once again from the ninth. So moving down a step, we skip down to the fifth and we're actually landing there. We're jumping up to the root note of the next chord there on beat one of measure two. So from there, like I just mentioned, we're utilizing the whole half diminished scale and very clearly that's what we're doing because we're just going straight up that scale. In fact, the entire measure, we're just moving up that whole half diminished scale before resolving to the fifth there on the three minor chord there on beat one of measure three. So from that fifth, we've got a nice triplet embellishment. We sort of move down to the third, the root and we skip down there to the fifth. So we've got a nice minor arpeggio there just in a different inversion and we jump up to the ninth and we've got that same cell that we actually saw in the first measure. So we're moving down by step before skipping down to the fifth and we actually end up there on the minor third of the chord there on beat one of measure four. So of course we're on to our sharp two diminished. We start on the minor third, we jump up and once again, we're actually moving down that whole half diminished scale. And we actually end up resolving to the seventh there on the one chord quite nicely. So having gone through a few progressions here, hopefully we're able to see that memorizing material over progressions will help us further internalize progressions that we're going to be seeing throughout all of jazz vocabulary in basically every tune that we ever see. And of course, it's about just being able to put together these different progressions when we learn tunes. It's gonna help speed up the process of learning tunes. And it's also gonna just help us be able to play over these different progressions. We're, able to, we're gonna be able to hear our way through these progressions because we've actually practiced material. We've memorized material over these different progressions. Of course, if you'd like to dive deeper into any of the material that we covered today, as well as plenty of other chord progressions, go ahead and check out Andrew Gould's resource, Essential Changes, Vocabulary for Common Chord Progressions. Of course, you can see that in the link in the description below. And of course, if you're gonna go ahead and pick up the resource, make sure you use the code EAR5 for an extra $5 off. Of course, like, subscribe, and click the bell button so you're notified when we post next. And absolutely feel free to leave a comment with what you'd like us to cover in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.